Okay, hello, welcome back to another game of chess. Our opponent begins with b3. I'm playing Adiban right now. Okay, b3 is immediately super interesting. Let's go knight f6, a non-committal move. Oh, you know what? They're going for a double Fianchetto opening here. We are going to claim the full center, because why not? The absolute full center. Uh, this is kind of just the best way to play against people that insist on doing things like this, is claim the full center and just do it do it unapologetically. Where are they going to castle? I think it's likely they'll go knight f3 and castle kingside. So I'm going to play knight c6, bishop e6, queen d7, and castle queenside. That is the general plan. Start with bishop e6. Developing all the pieces. They have not moved either of the knights. Wow, what is this? Are they going to castle this way? Let's see. Let's see. We've. I mean, this, this move certainly telegraphs to them that we know they're castling kingside and prepare to set up the uh, the bishop queen battery here towards the h3 square ready to uh, dislodge that bishop which is the primary defender of these weakened light squares uh, the reason they are weak is because if we look on the king side of the board here um all the pawns are on dark squares so you know the dark squares are very very secure very sturdy but the light squares very exploitable and very much i'm staring at them with my queen in fact i'm going to play h5 straight away I'm going to go for this hook in front of our opponent's king. Um, and so they're going to play h4 to stop me from going h4. We were going to try and open the h-file, which is fine. But again, it's another pawn pushed in front of your king. Now we're just going to castle queenside. And our position looks absolutely beautiful, I'll be honest. I really think... Okay, here's a sort of general concept, a general tip uh, for attacking in chess. If you want to attack on a flank it's best to close the center in general. This is not always true, but I really feel like it might be in this scenario. The only thing is we would then concede the, uh, the F4 square for the knight, but closing the center here means this bishop is gonna be dead. I mean, it's just staring at its own pawns. Maybe you play C4 at some point, or you go knight here and then C4, like it, it looks possible, but I think we're gonna be speedy enough with just throwing pieces at this king. They do go knight in there, okay. I was kind of tempted to go bishop d6, and I'm going to. What? Why did they just go back? That was, so they just did not want the smoke. They did not want me taking this knight. They immediately regretted their decision. Okay, <laughs> interesting. I'm, I'm so shocked by how quickly that happened. I'm very, like, confused right now. But oh well. I really want to go for g5. Sack the pawn. h4. Sack the knight. Takes. You have to go rook here. Otherwise, I'm going queen h3. We take here. Here. You know what? We're playing knight into g4. This, this has to be a good move. The reason being... This square looks very, very saucy for my knight. So if I can defer this pawn somehow or attempt it into being pushed, we are taking here and winning everything. So here, honestly, I mean, what, you're threatening to go here? Do I really care? We're playing g5. Do whatever you want here. Probably I should have taken some more precautions against c4, but no one cares. We're going for this king. We're going for this king as quickly as possible. And if we take here, take here, and they take, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a long day for them. So they take like this. Now our H file is one step to being opened. One step close to being opened. In fact, we're gonna push the pawn. We're gonna divert this pawn, a little gambit, and then push past. And um, the point is that I think probably at some point you have to do this. They attack our bishop. Look at this move, guys. Look at this move. Look at this move. Bishop takes g3. If you take with the pawn, goodbye to your queen. If you take with the knight, I take with pawn, open my h file. And if you take with the pawn, then it's still goodbye to your queen. What a move. What a beautiful, like, demolition sacrifice here with the knight bastion on, uh, on g4. Oh, yes. Let's get a quick sip from the w mug for that one. This is w because my name's Will. Like, it's not just w for the sake of w but we take here 
and that is absolutely beautiful. This king is being torn open. It's being eaten alive. If you go here, I can probably take like this. Or maybe I trade the rooks first and then do that or something similar. But if you don't, I might even sack here. Pawn takes and go check here and mate. Oh my, this is, the game's over. The game is already over. How did it get this bad? They take with the king, what? Whoa, <laughs> what? They take with the king. That's an incredibly ballsy move, let's say. I really feel like this h3 square needs our queen on it because that would force the king out here and then we can have some fun. So I think it might actually make sense to go check. Not check, that's not a check. But to attack the queen, you take, then we go check, but then you can go here. But then I could go check the king moves and take this bishop. Like that's that's probably that's probably sound. What if I play knight here? The idea to whack it on f3. That'd be so funny. Knight here, and if you take, then I go check. Now your f pawn. Oh my! Then we, then we go check here. Wait, knight here takes check. King f4. Is that mate? Here, queen here, mate. Guys, we're playing. Look at this move. Knight to e5. If you take this. You just lose. Check here, and this will be checkmate after uh, queen g4, rook g4, or maybe queen g4 I think is also mate. No, queen g4 is mate because if rook g4 the king goes down here. I mean, we might try and have a bit of fun anyway, so they can't take this. They have to move the rook. Now, this gives us the opportunity to have swung our knight into f3, which looks so nice I can't even begin to describe it. We could also play knight d3. We could have a knight outposted on d3. Like, that's how good our position is right now. Or, or, we take, take, queen g4 check, king h2. Yeah, it's just mate, guys. It's just mate. The knight, it doesn't even need to move from here. Because after the queen takes, we will go check here, and this will be checkmate. Not only are we winning the queen because of a of a pin here, but it, it's, the king can't even run because the queen's on g4. So that is just going to be checkmate. So queen cannot take because there is forced mate in two. The queen doesn't take. Instead decides to hold on to this and move out of the way of the rook. But now... Oh, you've got to assume I'm going like check, right? Surely. Oh, I mean, I probably just have mate with, like, the queen somewhere. Here, here. Oh, look at this. Check. King is forced to f4. And we have this move, which is checkmate in one. Like, we have knight to g6 checkmate. We also have knight d3. Queen has to take the knight. Then queen here checkmate. I mean, I could just play checkmate in one with the knight. But it could be kind of funny, like, you know, when you when you have mate in one, look for better. I don't know. I don't know. If I was going live right now, I'd ask I'd ask the chat what what to do in this scenario. Because we've got a we've got a really tough choice. We've got win the game in one move, or win the game in two moves. Now honestly, in my head, and I, I study maths at university. So trust me when I say two is bigger than one. So we're gonna go knight d3, because two's, two's better than one, right? And then after you take, we will then go checkmate. And uh, our opponent might think we're a moron, but uh, everyone watching this video knows two's mate and two better than mate and one. If it's all forced, go for the most extravagant, and that is outrageous. What an outrageous game. Our opponent played some weird moves, but we punished it with that bishop takes g3. Let's look at the analysis. Just have a quick sip from the... Uh... <clears throat> okay, so here we are in the analysis. If we scroll down here, you can see 95% accuracy with a blunder. And the reason it was a blunder, and I'm going to completely ignore this, is because it went from mate in 18 to minus 5.5. Like, so the computer's like, oh, idiot, you should have found mate in 18. Now, 
Admittedly, I've been known to pull off some outrageous stuff in the game of chess. Mate in 18 by force. No. Okay, let's go through the game. So, B3, Knight F6, and yeah, G3. If we look at the Masters database here, B3 makes sense, Knight F6 also makes sense. There's actually a Hikaru Magnus game uh, in this line. In fact, there's a few Hikaru Magnus games. Hikaru, Maxime Vashi, Legrave. Magnus Carlsen versus Jan Krzysztof Duda. Sergei Karyakin, Shakriya Mamadjarov. Why are all the goats playing B3? Although it's all just Hikaru. Look, that's so funny. It's all just Hikaru here. Yeah, I guess Hikaru opens with B3 a lot. Anyway, uh, yeah, after the double Fianchetto, we see there's only seven master games left because who is double Fianchettoing here? It kind of just gives away the advantage for White if we let the engine run a bit here. You see that White's, White being able to go first is good because, and you don't have to make, you know, a big claim to the center, but if you just don't make any claim to the center and don't develop any pieces, you know, you're just preparing to Fianchetto bishops, fine. But at the same time, I'm just going to claim the center and be in a better position. Like, you know, we, it's just much easier for us to play here. We have all the freedom. It wants h5 immediately. That is so funny. We go for bishop here. Queen d7 best. Castles. Bishop here. Again, it wanted h5. The computer... This is why I love the computer sometimes. It's just telling me I should have played h5 earlier. Which I'm always... Uh, I have open ears for people telling me to play h5 earlier. Anyway, we went here. It says inaccurate. It's only inaccurate because h5 was so strong. Still a really good move. Uh, dislodging this bishop. And then we can take. Although, actually, eight, okay. Basically, every move I should have just played h5. The reason h5 here is better um, than what we did is because you can't immediately play h4 so you have to take take and then we are going to be able to play h4 and crash this open whereas because we took first sorry about that because we uh took first here when we then played h4 our opponent was able to play sorry when we played h5 our opponent was able to play um h4 here blocking this which wouldn't have been possible if we left the bishop there so that does make a lot of sense but we castle queenside and we are still i mean look this is just cascading towards our advantage here um, we've just got a much much better position the pawn develops and as I said, this is really good e4 best move um, Closing off this bishop and because we want to attack on a flank closing off the center to allow sort of all of our play to like Funnel through the direction of these pawns. You know, what I mean this pawn sort of defines um, This pawn chain this mini pawn chain here defines the direction of our attack almost you can't really attack through your pawns the opposite way to which they're pointing but there are a lot of you know open files and open squares and stuff that you can do and if your pawns are pointing towards the king then you know everything over here is going to be kind of shut off uh, by this barrier for our opponent just really broadly and conceptually we're not looking at any actual moves here this is just a really abstract justification for why this makes sense um, and our pieces are sort of under this and able to swing over and attack this king, which, which as you can see, we did with bishop d6, best move. Knight here is inaccurate, but actually not that bad because, uh, you know, what else are you going to play? We could have just taken this knight or played g5 first and gone for some outrageous shenanigans, but that was definitely weird from our opponent. g5 would have been the best move there. I thought I played it, but I didn't. I went knight in here. But now g5 here, h4. And this is a mistake because, and this is where the engine says this is a blunder. Now, it is not a blunder. I I refuse to believe that this is a blunder. The evaluation here is minus 9.2. Uh, and it went, okay, I mean, it just gets worse as the more the engine thinks. We've gone from forced mate in 18 to minus nut. Like, we're completely winning. This is a great move. We are going to, uh, can we even do this? I don't think we can remove the notation, but this is not a blunder. Uh, the Lee Chess engine sometimes will say things that are outrageous, um, like if you lose a mating sequence, even if it's force mating 18, for a completely winning position, it'll still say it's a blunder. We should have apparently, for this forced mating 18, taken here, has the engine lost the mate? Now I can't even see the mate. Stupid computer. Rook h1, and it wants queen f5. It can't see the mate anymore. Now it can. Mate in eight now. Okay, we're not even going to bother thinking about this. Taking with bishop is a great, great move. Um, of course, as I said, if pawn takes, then we can take here and win the queen. And uh, as we saw, if knight takes, pawn takes, you still can't take here. Everything's crashed open. And after king take... Oh! Knight g e5, best move. 
That is awesome. That is really good. Mate and 10, apparently. That is so cool. Unco I mean, moving this knight kind of had to be the best move. If we'd gone here, probably we're still completely winning. Uh, okay, rook h3 is preferable. King moves back. Just stack rooks. I mean, that makes sense. It's still forced mate somewhere. Um, but knight back is the best move. That is awesome. That is so cool. Basically supporting this. And after they go rook here, we can just take... Uh, because as I said, if they go here, we are going check here and whoo, checkmate uh, along the open h file. You see, opening that h file uh, was just so crucial, playing g5, deferring this pawn and then playing h4. So worth it. Um, so then instead takes, the queen goes here and we have mate in two, um, which of course, here, here. And I mean, we could have gone checkmate. Like we, we could have played this, but I thought, you know what? This is funny. Let's toy with our opponent a bit. Make the queen take this knight and then checkmate here, deferring the queen uh, from f3. If you have mate in one, look for better. Thank you so much for watching this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, our opponent played a little weirdly, but I mean, we kind of really did a little bit of a masterclass there on how to punish the Fianchetto, getting rid of allied square bishop, launching the h-pawn, even though I should have launched the h-pawn um, slightly earlier and should have traded the bishop slightly later. The idea, broadly speaking, of the attack is absolutely what you should be going for. And then finding knight g to e5 is really nice at the end there as well. Thanks so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff that helps out the channel. I would really appreciate it. And I'm going on holiday soon. So basically what I'm doing over today and the next couple days is I am going to try to make, like, I'm going to try and spend like nine hours a day making videos, get as many prepared as possible. But the upload schedule might go to one every other day instead of one every day. Um, over the following two weeks. I don't know when I'll post this video, but from the 11th to the 25th, um, it might be one every other day, and then I'll try and get back to every day after that. I don't know. I'm going to see how productive I can be. I'm going to have a lot of caffeine. Cheers. And uh, play a lot of chess. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.